Plug the system into a properly grounded AC power outlet. Remove a disposable VEL sheath from its packaging and slide it over the handpiece as directed in its instructions for use. Attach a new disposable VEL cap onto the patient end of the handpiece and place it back into the brackets of the LSU. Turn the LSU on by pushing the power button. The lamp status LED indicator will turn solid orange, indicating that the lamp has been activated and is warming up. After approximately 30 seconds, the lamp status LED indicator will start to flash green, indicating that the unit has warmed up sufficiently for you to test the light output level with the radiometer of the LSU. The LSU will remain in this state for another 90 seconds approximately. Up to this point, the power button is disabled to prevent premature shutdown of the lamp, which may damage it and shorten its lifetime. After this period, the lamp status LED indicator will turn solid green, meaning that the unit has fully warmed up. You now have complete control to power down the unit when desired. Remove the handpiece from the LSU and place the patient end of the handpiece with the VEL cap attached flat against the radiometer window of the LSU. Open the shutter in the LSU by pushing the thumb push button on the handpiece. If the radiometer LED indicator turns green, the LSU is providing enough light for a proper VELSCOPE examination and you may proceed. If the radiometer LED indicator turns orange, the lamp assembly may need replacement. Wait for 30 seconds and try again. If the radiometer LED indicator again turns orange, contact our customer support. If the radiometer LED indicator does not turn on at all, ensure that you have the shutter open by pointing the VELSCOPE handpiece at a visible surface to check that the device is emitting light. If the device is not emitting any light, push the button on the handpiece to open the shutter in the LSU. If you still do not see any light, the unit may need servicing or repair please contact our customer support. Attach a new VEL tractor to the VEL cap by pushing it into the designated slot. Push until you feel that the VEL tractor is securely in position. You may rotate the VEL cap and set the position on the VEL tractor with respect to the handpiece in one of eight positions in 45 degree steps. Rotate the VEL cap into the desired position. Handle the VEL cap with care as it is a disposable, single-use-only component, and its fragile asepsis window may be damaged if accidentally touched. Ensure that the patient is wearing the protective eyewear provided with the system. Darken the dental operatory as much as reasonably possible. If you cannot dim the lights to an optimum level for the VELSCOPE examination, you can use a disposable VEL drape by attaching it to the patient's safety glasses to block the ambient light. You are now ready to conduct a VELSCOPE examination. Module 3 VELSCOPE Examination This video provides an outline of how to conduct a VELSCOPE examination from initial patient greeting through the entire process. It will illustrate potential mucosal variations and confounders that may appear in a VELSCOPE exam and provide you with a reference in how to proceed with these types of indications. Overall, the video aims to develop your confidence in effectively integrating the VELSCOPE technology and screening process into your practice. Many people are apprehensive about a medical test or evaluation related to a potentially life-threatening condition. The VELSCOPE enhanced screening is as important as any other oral mucosal examination procedures, but because of its newness, some patients may be reluctant to have it done initially, especially if they have at-risk habits. It's imperative to introduce the procedure in a way that puts patients at ease, or they might even refuse to have it performed. The procedure may or may not be covered by the patient's insurance, but for less than the cost of a flu shot, you can give the peace of mind that a thorough oral examination with VELSCO provides. Some facts you may wish to convey to patients when introducing VELSCOPE include Recent data indicates that 25% of new oral cancer patients do not fit the profile of high risk. The greatest increase of new oral cancer patients is under the age of 40. 
There are approximately 9,700 new cases of cervical cancer each year, whereas there are approximately 31,000 cases of oral cancer every year. The estimated number of deaths due to oral cancer is more than twice that of cervical cancer. Women routinely have a pap smear performed every year for the prevention of cervical cancer, but until now, examination techniques for oral cancer have been somewhat limited. The Velscope is a technique to find tissue abnormalities, including the cancerous and precancerous lesions earlier, which will lead to a much better treatment prognosis for patients. Perform the typical white light examination first. Turn off the overhead light. Then repeat the intraoral examination using Velscope by viewing the oral cavity through the Velscope handpiece to enable the visualization of the tissue's natural fluorescence. When viewing the intraoral tissue through the Velscope handpiece, it is essential to maintain the recommended distance of approximately 2 to 4 inches from the oral cavity in order to maintain adequate intensity of the natural fluorescence perceived through the Velscope handpiece from the tissue. Use the Velscope perpendicular to the tissue, so you are aiming it straight at the tissue as opposed to at an angle. If you use loops, we recommend that you first survey the entire mouth with the Velscope without magnification to optimize contrasting. Loops have a narrow field of view that may increase the difficulty in contrasting the normal and abnormal mucosa. After this initial examination, achieve a comfortable distance from the end of the handpiece that allows you to achieve a focal point at the mucosa as you would normally. When viewed through the Velscope handpiece, healthy tissue typically has a distinct apple green glow, while abnormal tissue can appear as a dark or deep maroon colored region. This helps differentiate between healthy mucosa and areas of concern that may require further action. The suspicious tissue doesn't have to be a perfect dark brown or black color, but is clearly and distinctly dark in relation to its fluorescing surroundings. Document all findings, both normal and abnormal, in the patient's clinical record. The Velscope oral lesion tracking form, available online, may be used for this purpose. Re-examine any suspicious regions under white light as follows. Re-evaluate the region under white light. Repalpate the region. Identify any benign conditions that might have caused the region to appear dark under Velscope examination. Some benign conditions that may appear dark under Velscope include traumatic lesions, for example, chronic irritation from denture or cheek biting, pigmented lesions, for example, melanotic macule, vascular lesions, for example, varix or hematoma secondary to trauma, common infections, for example, oral candidiasis and recurrent herpes, and inflammatory conditions, for example, aphthous ulcers. If after re-examination, the lesion cannot be ruled out as benign, observe the suspicious tissue through the Velscope handpiece while applying a light amount of pressure in a sweeping motion with the backside of an explorer or similar instrument to diffuse any superficial blood from the area. Example, blanching. This should be coupled with the lye blanching. If the green fluorescence returns with this pressure, then the lesion may be of an inflammatory or vascular nature and appropriate care to treat the possible cause may be recommended. If you suspect an abnormal mucocutaneous lesion, a follow-up visit for re-evaluation should be scheduled in approximately two to four weeks. You should relieve the high pressure point from the denture base and recontour the sharp cusp. If the lesion is not resolved after this follow-up time, proceed with further investigation of the suspicious tissue according to your normal standard of care or refer to a specialist. Your clinical judgment will ultimately determine the appropriate course of action. Emphasize that persistent positive findings does not mean cancer. If the patient cannot make a follow-up or you feel that the patient is unreliable, immediately send the patient to an oral medicine specialist. It is recommended that all areas of concern be photodocumented both under standard lighting conditions and through the Velscope handpiece. The Velscope can be attached to a digital camera or a videoscope. The dental photo system is available from dental learning centers. 
It works as both a standard dental digital camera and comes with an adapter and pre-programmed settings to allow for Velscope photography in both still and video modes. PhotoMed has an adapter that attaches most standard SLR dental cameras to the Velscope for still photography. The MagnaView VideoScope attaches Velscope to the high-quality video camera for high-resolution live video of the Velscope exam. It can also capture high-quality still images and perform quality magnification. Keep in mind that the Velscope can help find not only malignant lesions such as carcinoma in situ CIS, and squamous cell carcinoma SCC, but also precancerous conditions such as dysplasia early in the disease development process when the probability of a favorable treatment outcome is highest. This is actually one of Velscope's main benefits. Thus, a lesion that appears dark under Velscope examination and that is subsequently biopsy confirmed to be not only cancer but any grade of dysplasia should be considered for further attention. Your role as a general dentist and the role of the RDH is not to diagnose but to detect suspicious tissue to determine if a biopsy or a specialist referral is appropriate. While abnormal mucosa does not always mean cancer, it is much better to err on the side of caution to protect the patient and sample tissue that turns out to be benign rather than to leave undiagnosed in the oral, a potential disease process that could lead to cancer. Please refer to Module 4's Practical Guide to the Clinical Use of Velscope for more information.